time for another episode of the Josh Cast. Da 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 da. We're doing an opening theme because we don't know what else to talk about. Which means that deep down we do know what else to talk about. But we're in denial, so we're using silliness to hide it. It's the Josh cast. Yeah. So, what to discuss today? I am not in a relationship because I'm afraid of being hurt and I'm emotionally closed off. And that is the way it has stayed for many years. And uh, the one time I was with somebody, I didn't really allow myself to open up. Uh, and I've been terrified ever since of opening up. What do I mean by opening up? Um, well, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. And uh, a lot of WTF podcasts, a lot of Mark Marin podcasts. And it's interesting, but it's based on some of the conversations that he's had, Specifically, the one where he had an interview with Eve Ensler, um, who wrote the Vagina Monologues. And Eve was talking about the damage that is done when, when you're not, when somebody is not able to process their emotions and their feelings in a healthy way, and how it manifests sometimes into very horrible. Uh, uh, manifestations. I wanted to come up with a better word there and I didn't. So I had to repeat manifestations. That's not what I'm going for. But at any rate, I, I think I'm afraid of loss. I'm afraid of re- loss and rejection. So I cut myself off. So now I'm asking myself, well, what do I what do I do now? If I know this, what's the next step? And the tricky part is that I also kind of like being alone. You know, other than the crippling loneliness, it's it's quite it's quite a delight actually. And I know that I don't want to go out there and try to date. I don't like the process of dating. But then I ask myself, okay, well, is is it that I really don't like the process of dating or that I'm afraid to open up? I'm sorry, I have to comment on this because I'm watching a guy cross the street who's got huge arm muscles and smaller leg muscles. And I know I've, other comedians have talked about this before, and I know I'm kind of uh, skirting the issue, but balance, man. I mean, if you're going to... Like, if you look... Take my body, for instance. I don't work out 100% of my body. As a result, there's balance. It all looks terrible. So there's symmetry. It's not too much to ask. But anyway, back to loneliness. You know, I like the freedom and I hate dating, the process of dating, and there's a part of me that wants to be in a relationship. And I am poor. There's a lot a lot of energies are pulling at each other. 
There's a lot of contrary impulses going on here. And then the other thing that keeps getting in my way is that book, The Alchemist. About the guy looking for the treasure. Spends his whole life looking for the treasure. Has an opportunity to be in a relationship. And she says, no, you got to keep going for your treasure. Don't worry. Find the treasure and then, then come find me. And I'm sure she was saying that because she wanted him to achieve his dreams. Uh, not because she wanted to make sure that when she when he came back to her, you know, he had a game plan. He had a savings of some kind. I'm not going to support you. You you go out and find your treasure. So, there's a part of me that really connects with that. It's like, no, I'm the, the focus here is the treasure. And the love is going to happen when it happens. And I just don't worry about it. And that's why, instead of being in a relationship or trying for a relationship, I'm recording this podcast. I am choosing this podcast over a relation. I am choosing this podcast that gets averages five views per day. Those five people. I am choosing you over love. Let that sink into your brains for a minute. Consider that. I'm making a right turn. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult place to turn. Great metaphor for how I feel about relationships at this point. Because there's a lot going on. There's people crossing. You've got the, a, a huge, I don't know, bike lane that's, that seems exorbitantly big. Or I don't know what this lane is. But there's only one lane of traffic and then this other giant... It must be a bus lane. But it's taken up more than half the street. I mean, it's... They really care about their bus on this particular street. Don't even get me started, by the way, on the IBS, which is acting up, and what I think is my sciatica, unless the sciatica and the IBS are connected. This, by the way, is another fear of mine. I mean, this is what I'd be talking about with the prospective mate. So maybe I just need to find another 90-year-old and I'll be good to go. I also had the opportunity to leave earlier. I did not take that opportunity. I was out late last night, did a couple of mics. As usual, when I did vulnerable, when I got vulnerable, it did better. When I tried to be silly, didn't get better. So I'm, I'm pushing the vulnerability today. Or not pushing. That's the wrong... I don't want to use that word. I want to allow the vulnerability to come out. And to just kind of be vulnerable about this. I'm terrified, too, of hurting the other person. If and when I'm ever in a relationship. Terrified of it. I don't even want to initiate anything at any point. I mean, the most I initiate something is I'll send a form letter. And at the end of the day, I, I ask myself how much control I actually have over everything I'm talking about. Because there are people who say to me, oh, you should be in a relationship. Just go get a girlfriend, Josh. Like it's that casual. Like you just up and go get a, you know. Yeah, just go, you know, get a girlfriend. Pick up some milk on the way. Get the girlfriend and the milk. Not necessarily in that order. Your your call. I'm allergic to milk. But it's not... Uh, it is not that easy for me. I don't, do, I don't just go and get a girlfriend. To me, it's... At least it feels... More like... I 
what does it feel more like? Winning the lottery, something like that, I'd say. Or observing Halley's Comet. It's not something you just go and do. You know, the stars have to align. But then people will say, well, that's because you're not trying. You got to get out there and you got to try. You got to get out there and you got to try. And I feel like these are the very same people that keep trying and trying and trying and they're not finding anything either. And my view on it is if I'm not going to find anything, I'd rather use my time talking about how lonely I am and writing jokes about that. That seems like a better use of my time than trying to achieve a relationship. I think it's going to be another diarrhea day. I hate to break it to you. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not eating anything bad. Well, I had steak yesterday. What am I saying? That's usually not a good plan. The rule is I can't have fun anymore. That's the rule. I can only eat things that uh, are healthy. And if I ever try to eat something that tastes good, I pay for it. But back to this issue with women. And me not trying. I don't want to try because I want to, I don't want to try until I'm at a point where I feel okay in life, where I have a career that I feel happy about, and a, a steady income that I feel happy about, and I don't feel like I'm there. And when I feel like I'm there, then... You know, I'll be about 85, and I'll go on Tinder. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, that's the that's the duality of it. Because on the one hand, the uh, it is hard to be lonely, but on the other hand, it's so nice to be free. (laughs) That's what a relationship... A relationship feels like a... a prison to me. Yeah, it definitely feels like a prison. And sometimes I wonder if there are people who are in relationships the same way that uh, those guys from Shawshank Redemption were always trying to stay in prison. They're just an institutional man now. So I'm very wary of being in a situation that's not healthy. Unfortunately, given my background and the degree of my neuroses, the chances of me being in an unhealthy relationship are hovering at around 100%. I don't know how to possibly be in a healthy relationship. I don't know, I don't think I have the tools for that. I think I have the tools to be in a stable, dysfunctional relationship where 51% of it is good and 49% of it is harrowing or harrowing. There we go. I think I have the skill set for that. I think that's the best case scenario. The best case scenario is that it's utterly horrible, but towards the end of it, I'll keep saying to everyone, oh, we, we really, you know, our love really grew over the years. I think that's the, the best case scenario. But an actual healthy, stable relationship in which 
we communicate with words as opposed to feral screams. I don't see that as being something that is in the cards. I believe the tarot card for that is an angel with wings gently shaking her head saying, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Not you, my child, not you. You just got to take it day by day, man. That's all I can do at the end of the day. Take it day by day. And I just noticed that my sciatic is worse today. It was better and then it got worse. It goes up and down. I think it's related to stress. I hope, I hope it's only a sciatic. I hope it's not something else like a terminal thing. But the better and worse seems to be suggesting a chronic yet not serious condition. I don't know. I'm not sure the doctors know. I did an x-ray. He said, I don't see anything. Great. So it's either a pin- he said it's either a pinched nerve or a bone spur. So I guess the pinched nerve is a, you know, something ripped. There's cuz that back in 2007 I did nothing and that damaged it. Cuz I'm trying to explain this to my mom and she's like, "What did you do?" And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> I've tried avoiding doing things. I mean, I don't I took bowling class in high school. Maybe it was that. I don't know. Or a bone spur, which I'm not entirely sure what a bone spur is. I guess they're just, sometimes there's part of the bone that goes, I'm not done yet. Let's keep going. Very unsure about these things. But where possible, I just don't like involving doctors. Because... They prescribe medications that uh, give you side effects. Like, for instance, my dad, who's saying his side effect is his mouth is hot. Got this burning sensation in my mouth. And the doctors don't know what it is. They think it might be a reaction to the medication. A burning sensation in the mouth. Horrible. A burning mouth sensation. Beautiful. That's what he's going through. From one of the medications. We don't know which one. But the side, of, the side effect might include, hey, my leg feels like an arm now. All right. That's a new thing. Have to get used to that. Nope, that's not my arm. That's my leg. Or is it my arm? 